Hey guys, this is Mike from the Scared Stuff Podcast. This week's episode, The Exorcist, uh, we had an audio issue while recording the episode. Uh, we couldn't figure out uh, what it was and could not find a fix for it. So uh, we're just letting you know that this, uh, this week's audio is a bit wonky. So I hope you bear with us um, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Scare Step Podcast. This is your host, Mike, and my co-host, Scott. How are you doing today, my dude? I'm really tired. Me too. I'm, like, really, really tired. Yeah. So, Look at that today banter we're... right there. That's some pretty good fucking banter. Yeah. I'm really tired. Me as well. Continue. It's better than, uh, than some of the inane bullshit we come up with. I, I'm just fucking... My body's just shutting down. Shame. My brain shutting it's... down... Everything is just fucking at ten percent. It's it's a bit later. Nah, yeah, it's a bit it's, later. It's 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 way it's later. Quite a bit later. Yeah, it's like four or five hours later. Yeah, um, I'd say we're. I, usually, it's, I think it's two like to two and a half hours usually. After yeah. we usually do. So uh, this week we are going to be covering the next in our decade of horror for for October. The seventies. This is the seventies. And it is going to be The Exorcist. And like I was talking about last time, pretty unanimous pick, I'd say. But yeah, I feel like it'd be. Uh, there's definitely ones that you can argue. Yeah. But they're not ones that they're ones we have other plans for. So. Yeah, I, I would say this film represents to me horror in the '70s the most. Yeah, I mean, I can't really think of another. There's only like one other horror movie from the '70s. Uh, a couple actually, two. At least, like, you know, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Jaws, actually. Oh, I can think of four, including uh, those two. Halloween. Alien. Alien, yeah, it's a good I mean, yeah, it's a good one, too. I, I just... Nobody Coincidentally, talks most about, of these are two hours. Nobody talks about, like, oh, what film made me scared shitless when when it came out or whatever, as much as, like, something like The Exorcist, though. Exorcist. It, uh, Jaws a lot, too, but Jaws is more like a scare of, like, going out into the ocean. Exorcist, Jaws, Halloween. It's probably the, only, the last time that that happened for people. I don't hear it about Halloween. Really. I heard it about Halloween when it released. I'm not saying like it, it lived on like that, but yeah. when it released, a lot of people were terrified. I mean, people right. weren't. Uh, there's that, that famous story about the about the score. The score changed everything. But yeah, I mean, I can't think of the last movie that caused the kind of stir that something like this did. Yeah, like this was. For the time, pretty fucking hardcore. I mean, it's still, it's, it's still, it isn't, it isn't a slouch. I'll say it's much more graphic than other entries you would think in, in like this decade. Less we're doing. Yeah, because I, I totally, you know, I, I kind of put it out. I think I put it out on Twitter while I was watching. And I was saying like, I'm watching The Exorcist for the podcast, and I am stunned by how much of this I, I literally didn't remember. Like, I thought I remembered this movie a little bit differently than I do. So I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't gonna watch it. Because I, I saw it six months ago, and everything yeah. is so fresh in my head. I'm like, I don't need to do this. I don't need to watch it's, it's it It's such a vivid movie. Yeah, but I, I figured while I wait, I'll just put it on just in case, just to have like a refresher. Yeah. I watched the entire thing. <laughs> I didn't intend to. I was like, well... It's I, hard not to. I've seen this thing in the past two years. I've seen it at least two to three times. I'm like, I don't need to watch it again. And I watched it, I'm like... I think I do actually, and I watched it's the kinda, entire fucking film. It's I, I was gonna wild. message you saying like, "Hey, dude, like, uh, what do you want to do the episode?" And I, I purposely didn't because I was <laughs> watching the movie again. I'm like, I got time. Go on. Yeah, I was sitting there watching this, and for one thing, like, I forgot how much. Well, I didn't really forget, but it's a little bit different when you are watching the movie. How slow of a burn this movie is. Yeah. Like, it's not. You know, it's called The Exorcist, but there is no exercising until the last like 30 10, minutes 10 of the movie minutes, maybe really. yeah 10, well yeah 15. the majority of the actual heavy lifting happens at the end and it's kind of amazing how long they go before even showing Pazuzu or showing Regan, Reg, Reagan really possessed and what? that's just wild my favorite shot where they have Pazuzu's face in is yeah. when uh, the priest is having a dream about his mother and it keeps flashing yeah and like i really i good. had forgotten that was in there i'm like holy shit that's fucking yeah. terrifying that that dream is really good like it's it's really i don't usually like dream sequences in movies funnily enough my favorite horror movie is nightmare on the street all about dream sequences but 
in movies like this, like movies that are not set in dreams, I don't really like dream sequences because a lot of the time I feel they feel really inconsequential. But in this, like, especially because of you know the story of Father Karras, that is so effective. It is so not only is it is it scary, but it's also like really sad. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of wild because I, I texted you part part way through the movie. You know, this is a movie that's I think a lot of people hail as like a perfect horror film people yes. in the community like a lot of people will i'll say there's there's one thing that kind of threw me through a loop in this movie editing wise what the, because uh, the, like the score or is it just like the mixing no it's the edit no like like the editing of oh. the film like one scene we're there with father Karras visiting his mother in the in the, the same asylum and then she's dead oh yeah and, passage of time yeah like i had no idea like it, it's like literally that scene and then there might be one small scene in the middle and then all of a sudden she's dead do you get nothing nothing of that i i, I was like sitting there at the screen I'm like she's dead what the fuck happened like i knew i knew she died i remembered that she died because that was a huge part of the of the the way that pazuzu taunts him and stuff like that but I didn't remember her dying completely off screen from one scene to another. That was that just threw me through a loop. I don't know if there was something still left on the cutting room floor that that discussed that, or if that was just we want to move past that to get to the stuff with Re- with Reagan. Or... We watched two different versions. I watched the theatrical, and you watched the uncut. Yeah, and there was nothing I, stitching I, that together. I can't discern why they wouldn't put a scene in there just to add to it or something unless they really felt like there wasn't anything that could take that time or they didn't have a scene that really made it flow better i don't know i feel like it'd be really weird you know from our especially because the person who adapted the book is the writer of the book and, and also william freakin's a pretty like he's a stickler for for a lot of stuff and i would have thought that that would that would have been something he wouldn't have missed but maybe it's intentional to, to give you like a harsh you know cut I think it is intentional. I think it but feels it, just, it feels really weird. It feels really weird to go from one scene to the other and they're saying, Oh yeah, Father Karras' mother died last night. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. she was she seemed I mean she was obviously in distress, but she didn't seem like she was gonna die. But and also I thought they I thought that they said too that, that they uh, they found her in her house and like she was not in her house. Unless because he was going there be- he house. was he was going there begging her, saying that I'm gonna take you home, I'm gonna take you home. And you don't really see what happens after that. So maybe he did take her home. I don't know. And then she died at home. I don't know, but because they described like like no one made it to her in time. Yeah. And the whole thing is that she lives up, you know, far away from Father Karras, and Karras has to take a subway to ride up to go take care of her. So I don't know, but th- that that just threw me through a loop. I had to kind of like sit there for a second and really think about it. I'm like, did I miss? Did I blink and miss a scene? Like, yeah. Wild. But out I, of everything in the movie, that is probably that is the most egregious thing in the entire movie. I used to think that the beginning was too much of a burn, like it would take too long to get going with the stuff in Iraq, but yeah. every time I watch it, it flows better more and more and more, so yeah. I don't mind I... it as much. I do think it does indulge a little bit too much there. I think you could cut some time off there, personally. I think it's kind of crazy, because like it did, that did not feel very long to me. It's not about feeling very long, but like as he lingers and looks around, I'm asking myself, like, why do some of these shots have to be in the movie and they really just don't i don't think it yeah. feels too long or it's adding too much to the film but like there's no narrative behind it it doesn't add much to the the narrative of the story so at that time like why is it really here besides just showing people in iraq just you know about these like lengthy shots of him like walking around or something yeah even just him looking at like the people or whatever like people watching yeah I- i'm sitting there like there's nothing really to it not that they look bad not that the, the scenes are bad or poorly shot it's just it doesn't add to the narrative it doesn't really impact anything besides showing that he is in iraq but you could cut off 30 seconds to a minute maybe even two and i still know he's in iraq yeah yeah i i, I definitely didn't feel any of that this time around i remember watching this for the first time and saying that the first like 30 minutes of this movie is boring yeah and i i, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say, say that, that i think it's boring or anything no, you just think it's excessive. I I don't have a problem with it, personally. Like, I yeah. don't have a preference to have it gone or having it in there. I just think if I'm looking at the runtime of this film and I'm saying this film has to be structured a certain way and there's certain things that have to be in there and you're talking about the scene with the mother and how it feels like yeah. from going point A to point B, there's nothing in the middle that connects it that well. 
and yeah. I would agree. I'd rather have something in there that's going to talk about that or explain that a little bit more than just have three minutes, four minutes in Iraq. And yeah. I don't think that that being in there is a problem, but there's really no narrative reason for it to be long. I feel like if we're going to go explore New Zealand when we're watching the Lord of the Rings films, it makes sense to have long tracking shots that linger because You're it explains adventure. to you why the Shire is so important, why you should yeah. feel like they want to come back here. Those shots have a motive behind it. But in here, when he's just lingering around showing shots of Iraq, I'm like, I, I'm not coming back here. It doesn't really have a narrative purpose to have these shots linger a bit. Gotcha. But I don't I don't dislike it. I don't I don't think it harms the film at all. As I watch it every time, I think I like it more and more. But technically it doesn't need to be that long is all. Yeah, I actually was um was noticing the whole movie that there's a lot of harsh cutting in this movie. Oh yeah. Like, like something really bad will be happening and all of a sudden they'll harsh cut to the next character. They'll go to the Father Karras or something. Like, they'll harsh cut to it. And I kind of love that. Yeah, it really... It just keeps you off balance the entire movie. Especially because the harsh cutting, when it starts in the film, it feels like, oh, it's a little bit disjointed. Uh, whatever, maybe it'll flow out better as the film goes on. But the cuts become harsher and harsher and harsher and it shows that it's not done unintentionally. These are meant to just show how ragged the film is becoming as time passes on yeah it's like Pazuzu's possessing the movie itself causing it to be you know very harsh towards us like I feel like they like that is something that inherently makes people uncomfortable I think a harsh cut when you when you, yeah like when you're watching a movie and you're in a scene that's like really tense like any pick any of the scene with, with Reagan in this movie and they harsh cut to something else you're sitting there kind of, you know, taken aback by what you just watched and the scenes carrying on, which gives you this sense of unease and, you know, again, like off balance that I think Freakin is deliberately doing so that you're continuously in suspense. I think it's brilliant. It's, it's really smart. I think it in a lot of movies, I'd say harsh cuts are a little annoying, mm -hmm. but here they very much are in service of the story. I think a lot of it also comes down to earlier today we were having a discussion about how films go on forever. Like, yeah. as the ending goes on, it's answering up these questions and wrapping up a bunch of subplots and then almost creating a new plot for a sequel. And the way these harsh cuts happen, it almost leaves you saying, well, how does this scene end? What happens? And it leaves you asking these questions that the film's gonna not answer because it's like saying, hey, the whole point is to not answer your questions. Don't worry about that. Some more shit is going to happen. It's going to be just as alarming. So yeah. It keeps yep. the audience questioning what's happening next. What even happened previously? Yeah, I mean, like, to even take the the revelation that the the director is dead. Yeah. You know, the director, he, he got thrown from the window. And, you know, we don't see that happen. That's It, it wouldn't be difficult for Freakin to have shown us that. And, it, you know, it's not one more notch of disturbingness from, from Reagan, but... A, that would be tipping his hand a little too early. And also, he doesn't need to show it. Especially because he's going to show it later. Yeah, exactly. It would, it would um, ruin the climax if they did. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that because I, I really want to talk about that. That's that's one of my favorite scenes in the horror. So, I guess we'll break this down into three acts. Usually we talk about like, oh yeah, explain the plot. The plot's a fucking exorcism. The girl gets possessed. That's yeah. it. It's called the, the whole movie. Yeah. But we we kind of already touched on the, the opening act because yeah a lot of it's Iraq and then it goes into building character. That's the thing that the first third does so well though. It really builds yeah. a great relationship between the mother and the daughter. Where the mother a lot and of the time is... you'd think it's an afterthought or it's like, well, of course they love each other. They're mother and daughter. That's great. I know I'm supposed yeah, to rapport. believe that, but the way they showcase it is so endearing. Yeah, they have a great rapport. Linda Blair, as a as a child star, she she was just she's great in this. She's Fantastic. so good. Oh man, I'm, I don't know why I'm blanking on her name, but the the, the lady who plays the mother. She got beat just, the fuck up in this movie. Yeah, she's fucking awesome in this. On screen and off. Yeah, she's the mother from Requiem for a Dream. Oh, I have. And she's that. she's fucking incredible in that. So I mean, I've never seen her be bad, and she's really good here. Like you definitely buy these. Yeah, his mother and daughter. Fantastic. And watching watching her distraught, trying to figure out what's happening with Reagan, 
you know, she's talking to all these these doctors in this boardroom, and they all can't fucking figure it out. And even one of them just jokingly suggests exorcism, and it's like you're gonna joke joke about it this time. Like I read that as a joke. I don't know if you did. Like he was, he it almost felt like he was like, oh, you could try exorcism. Like it's. I don't and then read he was, it as a joke because I I think. It, He's taking it not like super seriously, but he's saying like he's offering it because he really has no alternative. Because he says yeah, like, it, oh, you know, it's more like a shock therapy. Like if they believe it, you know, yeah. it helps them get over it. But it's not doesn't have the same effect that you know the Catholics think it does. But it but yeah. in his head, he's almost like saying like, just get her the fuck out of here. We it, can't. It, do anything it, else. it just seems to me like he's he's giving her an option that he already automatically doesn't think is gonna work. Yeah, I don't think he so, thinks it's gonna work, but at the same time, he doesn't think anything it, is gonna work. I guess maybe it feels to me a little bit condescending. I don't know if condescending is the word. I think it just feels like everything at the bottom line comes down to being implausible. Just try everything to him. Yeah, maybe it's just you know that that scene alone is just like she's having this fucking absolute breakdown, and every scene I, after that, she's I would say a wreck. That the the doctors are very much not taking things seriously from the get-go though and they, yeah i mean the first thing, the first thing to suggest fucking yeah. like it's well, adhd they're well, saying I, they're little i, I mean if you think about it like a 90 pound woman of a mother could save her fucking uh, her daughter in a car accident and the mom's looking at her like are you fucking her, serious her body is conv- convulsing and raising on its own <laughs> Senator's like, oh, it's just the bed. She's just shaking the bed. Her hands aren't touching the bed. She can't be shaking the bed. Exactly. Like, and she most certainly is not shaking the bed and her mother. Also, you can't. She can't pick up her fucking body without pushing off of it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like the way her body the, the like lifts up and shit. Yeah, the physics of that doesn't make sense. Yeah, she can't. Idiot. She's not doing fucking twenty ab crunches a morning or anything. Like she yeah. can't just do that. Yeah, he's just not nah, just taking Ritalin. Just Ritalin. Just take Ritalin. Okay. Yeah, he's essentially he's essentially saying that his uh, that her daughter has ADHD, which I'm just sitting listening to. Him. I'm like ADHD. Let me tell you what I got ADHD. I've never told someone to get their fingers away from my cunt before, You're or anything that. like that. Obviously, I don't have the plumbing for that, but you know the vulgar outbursts like that, like that's not ADHD. Like, yeah, that's that's not the same. <laughs> I mean, back then, then again, to be fair, back then their concept of these things were different well, back then 80 you know, i mean it really really wasn't a thing really didn't have a name heavily prescribed too yes but it, it's just like cinema wasn't like that's not even like again it's, it's looking at it through 2021 vision yeah you're just like you're that's dumb like that's really stupid but well, also no matter like, what a doctor would never recommend an exorcism ever well no 100 yeah. percent. i would never expect them to the rest of the stuff that happens after that though like a lot of those i'm like oh i mean that sounds kind of logical i guess you'd, you'd look for the brain you look at the brain yeah that all makes sense yeah that does make sense therapists i mean a, a psychiatrist trying hit the therapy makes sense you know all that stuff I, I can buy all that but that first one i'm just like really i don't know if a doctor can recommend a psychiatrist though uh they can't recommend i I don't think it's really that he recommended it but he was just saying like maybe try this yeah i don't think that they can do that though really i don't especially in the type of scenario i mean i I don't don't think i don't know the uh doctor can i'm not a physician i don't know if it depends upon what type of doctor i don't know i don't know if he was a primary care physician or if he's just like a a doctor at a hospital i don't know if that changes anything i have no idea i have no medical know-how yeah i I mean it's a movie at the end of the day yeah so I mean, I guess it really depends upon what his title is. Bald. I know certain titles can't can't give bald recommendations. Man, that's his title, the bald doctor. The bald, the b- almost bald doctor. Yeah, <laughs> just too afraid to shave the sides, bro. Yeah, a lot of people. Bring, we're talking about the doctors, uh, doctor stuff. Like a lot of people say that the stuff in the hospital is actually more disturbing than the stuff with the exorcism. No, because of the because I I don't agree. Yeah, I mean there it, people, it is disturbing, but it's real and it, it's it's yeah, tough to lot, watch. That's the thing is like everyone everyone says that it's so it's much more disturbing because they know how real it looks because they yeah. like did a lot of research to try to replicate these procedures accurately and like it's also Linda Blair selling the performance where it's just like you feel really bad for this little girl going through all this shit and like you know they're sticking that thing in her neck. And you know, which blood is totally not out. actually in her neck, but it just you just feel like it no, is. no, it does. It's, it's obviously not in her neck for yeah. real, but like it looks like it is. Like, I know when I'm watching it, spraying like, blood out, 
I'm like, like they didn't do this real. to her, but like, I totally believe they did this to her right now. Yeah, like it looks real. And like knowing William Freakin, it's like if if they if they just give him a chance, he would have done it. If, if, uh, if, the way the if, blood starts coming out when they put the needle in it there, sprays. Too, it feels so natural when it starts coming out. Yeah, like the effect for it is absolutely fantastic. It's so perfectly timed. But it's it's sickening oh, to yeah. watch. Like it looks like you're watching someone's neck spurting blood, and yeah. it's really fucked up. And it's like, I wouldn't say that that's more more fucked up or disturbing than some of the shit that happens later on in the movie. I think nothing's more disturbing but than the cross. But it is fucked. Oh, the the, the, the cross stabbing? Oh, ha- absolutely. That is that is the most disturbing thing yeah, in the I entire movie. Like, in that's so uncomfortable with it just being a, a little girl. like. Yeah, and then the shoving her mother's face. And shoving her mother's face in it. It's fucking gross. And slapping the absolute living shit out of her and throwing her across the room. Yeah, no. That that is absolutely that is I think that's the first scene in the exorcist I ever saw. It, it um, set quite an impression. It set quite an impression. I can't remember the first one I ever saw. I think I remember like um I've seen I clips about, of the fucking head turning around. I used to see it all the time. Yeah. But like I, I, I was a pansy ass motherfucker and uh, back in the day I used to run those uh, those like what's it like two scary challenges on YouTube where like they'd put like a bunch of scary clips from horror movies together and you sit down and watch them and try not to scream or something. I've never done that. Was, that was one of them. I can't remember what the other ones were but I, I distinctly remember that. It's pretty hard to forget. <laughs> like, yeah, that was pretty fucked. Yeah, all the hospital stuff's bad. This... The church, the, the the cross is bad. The whole finale is fucked. <laughs> oh yeah, in a lot of it, ways. It, the problem like this movie is not like horrific as in like the oh my god or like the the shock moment. It's yeah, everything it's not is constant. so unsettling and uncomfortable. Yeah, as everything's just transpiring, you're like, oh, I wish this would wrap up. I wish it would just go by so much faster, please. It's also just like because the whole movie, obviously, like we were talking about, like the harsh cuts and everything, that all sets up this sense of unease it's also the the effects you know the whole movie they're, they're trying to ramp up tension from the point where she starts to show signs of being possessed to yeah. this incredible final act and you go from simple effects like you know the the shaking bed or jumping bed to physical stunts like her you know jumping up and down the bed and slamming back and forth on the bed yeah but once you get to like the real fucking crazy shit, like the cross, like all the stuff with her skin, the that they make her up, plus her neck the performance from Linda, 360 her ne- degrees. Yep, more than once, and it, it, it's the it's the last time that she does it. That's the, the I think the creepiest because it's so slow. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's a sound design. You know, I was talking to you, I was talking to you right before we started recording, saying like the sound design is a point, a thing I want to bring up because on my because I watch it on a Blu-ray, you watch it digitally. Digital. I have a surround sound system, and I, I watch the director's cut when they're coming up the stairs towards the end. Actually, get, uh, throughout a lot of the movie, when they're walking around the house, there's little whispers from Pazuzu everywhere across the front the back sides yeah that is just i i could hear it on the the digital i just can't decipher what they're saying or anything i i couldn't even really tell what they were uh, i heard a couple times one of them uh it was when when father Marin finally showed up one of them was saying Marin. oh yeah, yeah but that's the only one that i remember uh probably Marin and karis yeah but they were all over the room like they were in the room with me that is horrifying and I, obviously it's replicating stuff that they kind of did back in the day in the theaters yeah or like they would do now in a re-release and that is horrifying to hear it like passing over your head because like it even follows like camera moves because the camera will turn and the voice will shoot across the room to where it should be it's it sounds like not just with with those little voices but like the neck cracking as it's turning around the fucking gross ass sound of her throat up that pea soup you know honestly the i guess the first frames of of uh the Exorcist I saw that I that were like translations of it were not The Exorcist. It was Scary Movie too. Oh, yeah, I bad hate, movie. I hate those fucking movies now. I like Scary. I like Scary Movie One. I haven't seen it in a long time. Haven't had a desire to. When I was scary young, movie I used to love those movies. Dumb. They're so fucking terrible. Everything about yeah, I, them is terrible. 
I have no idea how I would react if I actually rewatched a scary movie now. I hate the second one. I hate it the most out the, of all of them. The, the second one is painful. Oh. I went back and I rewatched that because it was on Netflix one day and I watched it. Like I got to the scene where I think the vampire, uh, the vampire, what the fuck, the um, the ghost was was having sex with that girl. Yeah. I'm just like, this is dumb. The whole movie's like, really, fucking really dumb. bad. And like, I don't know. I, I love the fact that like it's such an our generation thing to love that movie. And, and I, I just don't. Every time I uh, I go to like a party or something, I was like, yeah, my germs. I'm just like, I literally think in my head like, your brain's the same as a fucking Neanderthal. So don't be near me. I, I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> I remember. I remember when I used to when we used to go to school and people would be like, what's that for the okay, first that movie? Shit's, that shit's pretty. Funny. It can be. Depends I, on how long it's done it's, for. It's fucking stupid. It's so stupid. No, it, it I is used absolutely to love it ridiculous. When I was younger, obviously, but there's just something funny about getting the ghost face to do that. That I just that is yeah. It, that's what that's what I mean. Like the first, I think the first scary movie has a, a decent chunk of funny stuff in it. Scary movie two, dumb. Uh, scary movie three. I, also I don't pretty think dumb. it's very funny. I just think like it's nostalgia. Yeah. There's some. I'll shit. say though, there's that's one true. thing in scary movie two that I think is really funny. Well, it's uh. It's blunt. <laughs> no. Human blunt's pretty funny. It's not funny, no. but it's so stupid. I'm like, I enjoy this. I, actually, I think this is. A, I think this is a scary movie too. The The Exorcist scene where um, it's it's James Woods as Marin. Yep. And, and uh, he comes in and sees sees what's going on. He goes, ha, no, and leaves. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, I, I think James Woods is pretty funny. <laughs> not not a great person. Have you seen uh, uh Scary Movie three and four? Three, yes, four, no. Dude, those movies are fucking terrible. But there's something about it so funny. Like, dude, every time he runs, doesn't the kid three over have in Neil- car, Leslie? So funny. Isn't Leslie Nielsen in three? Isn't he the president or whatever? Yeah, he's the president. Pisses out his finger. Yeah. Okay. The the pissing out of the finger thing that made me laugh pretty hard. Michael, I Charlie Sheen that shit made me laugh pretty hard. Oh, was that when the wife gets split in half? Yeah, he goes like, can I? spend time with the lower half what do you mean here let me show you there's the hot dog and the donut the very stupid fucking 2000s joke it's so stupid that's one of those movies like it's, it's one of those movies where i can look at that and say that's really bad you want to know something it's also really kind bad of funny movie is the m M&M scene where it's making fun of eight mile where he does a whole rap sequence being like oh yeah man my cousins call me wonder bread and i was like yeah dude the white guy's making jokes about himself he's funny and it was like they're really into his rap, and he puts his hood up, and it goes like that. <laughs> he looks like a clansman, and he just goes, "Yeah!" He starts marching around like, "All right!" And I was like, "I forgot about that." <laughs> it's so bad. Yikes! Yeah, no. I if I never watch, oh, I wouldn't mind watching the first scary movie again just to see if it holds up for me. I doubt I it will. I only watch but... it so you know it doesn't hold up. Yeah, I mean, hey, if it doesn't hold up, then you'll trust me. I'll tell you, but. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that one again, but the other ones I have no desire to ever see again. If that franchise ever came back, I would I would possibly land traffic. Yeah. Well, they came back. They did, and then the they... The Haunted House movies. Oh, I'm talking about like, literally the scary movie franchise, but yeah, you're right. I, it's they're, the they're Wayne's still Brothers. Making, it's the same yeah, They're shit. still making movies. It's yeah. the same shit. It's, it's them making horror movie parodies. Dumb. Dumb comedies. <laughs> dumb. Yeah. Well, whatever. People but, can like what they like. I have the right to judge, though. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about not that. A, a good movie. Yeah. So we've we've covered the first two acts. Let's talk about the final act then. I. What do you think about the final act? I again, like I said, I went into this totally forgetting a lot of this movie. Like I thought I had this movie down pat and understood and remembered a lot of it, but I don't. And when I got to the final act, I was surprised by like how late in the game it was. Yes. Like, I couldn't I couldn't actually check where the runtime was at because I watched this on my on my PlayStation 5 and there's no function to check like the Really? The runtime, yeah. I kept trying to oh, find a way. Was, fuck that. Fuck I don't that. know it. If there is a way, I don't know it. So I, I was like I should I kept trying to check like how long do I have left in this movie? And it's just like it would not let me check it. And I was like okay. Is that like I triangle guess. like it used to be? Nope, triangle brings up like just the menu itself, like the little um, the little like uh, controls. So, Stupid. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I didn't know how far in, but it had to have been when the exorcism itself started. It had to have been like ma- minimum. There had to have been like twenty minutes left. The exorcism is not more than 20, 25 it, minutes. It's, so. it's very short. Actually, I, I would say less than twenty. It has to be twenty minutes because the movie's two hours and one minute with credits. It's two hours and twelve for me. 
Yeah, so it can't be like anything crazy. It has to be like the last 20 minutes. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how, you know, the movie's called The Exorcist and The Exorcism's pretty, pretty short. Yeah. But, you know, Ma- Father Marin's showing up because he's, he's pretty much just at the beginning of the movie. And, and then he's gone yeah. for the entire movie. Yeah, until the the very end. And honestly, I mean, like, Marin showing up is that iconic shot that's the poster. I and really, yeah. Uh, I really that, wish... That shot's still fire. I wish they would just have some time to talk about Marin explaining how he might actually know what this demon is. You see, maybe that's not in, in the theatrical cut. I don't know. But he does talk... They do talk about Marin. The, the two... Oh. Um priests yeah but i wish marin would talk about it oh marin would say like hey i found i i probably released pazuzu because i i know that the priests talk about him as they're getting him they're like oh yeah father marin okay he spent time in in iraq he's in woodstock right now yeah he's in woodstock right now he did exorcism in africa 10 years ago okay yeah yeah theatrical yeah yeah it would be nice to have him just you you think he would say something about it yeah you you think he would say something you think that the um well, they they don't know it's Pazuzu, but even um, what's his name? Um, to be fair, Marin doesn't know it's Pazuzu until he gets there. No, 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 he doesn't. But I would like so, to have some indication. I mean, I wish that like after the first session when they step out, I wish he said something. Yeah. Like, cool. Like something like this feels familiar, or just something. Yeah, or like I recognize the voice, the voice, or whatever. Or I recognize the antics. I know it's Pazuzu or whatever, but yeah. yeah. But he shows up. It is kind of like one of these like epic moments. He's fucking awesome. And, and this He's movie so went like this movie shot this movie shot in full you know full frame man like it, and I don't mean like four by three I mean like corner to corner widescreen man it is a big blown up film and it is gorgeous and when he fucking steps out of that cab in that foggy street to get that iconic shot it is magic yeah it is it is so good. And when he enters the house, it's kind of wild to me that, that fucking Max, uh, Max von Sydow is in this. He's like 40. Oh. And he's playing in like a 90-year-old man. And it's 100% convincing to the point yeah. that I didn't know that. And when I was seeing him pop up in things, when I was watching him like as, as a, like a teenager, I'm like, damn, man, he hasn't aged a day since Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> he's just like, you, you learn, learn more about it. It's like, he's just under pounds and pounds. He's just you know, under a lot of makeup and they grayed his hair out. And I'm like, that is insane how good the makeup for him looks. Oh, he looks like an elderly man. The uh, way he shakes his hand when he's in the bathroom. Yeah, like when he's holding his thing and he's shaking, shaking his hand. I'm like, that's that's absolutely, like, his performance is fantastic. He's barely in the movie. Like, he's not in the movie very much, but every time he's on screen, he is absolutely fantastic. Oh, 100%. He commands the screen with his presence, like, no tomorrow. Yeah, you think when Karis is in the scene, you're gonna be like, oh, well, it's Father Karis. He's gonna be just fucking killing it. But when Marin's on screen, it's like, holy shit, dude. Kind of like, There's no watch- falter in his step. Everything has a strong power to him. He's like, never backs down. Well, it's kind of the thing, too. It's like he he shows up. He has this kind of, you know, kindly old man look and, and demeanor. You know, he's so, very soft spoken when he's talking to to the mother and all this stuff. But as soon as he has to throw down with Pazuzu, he is absolutely commanding his voice. He is absolutely the baddest motherfucker in the room. <laughs> like he, he is there. He's like, I fucking fought demons before. I will fight him again. Let's go, boys. Well, just the scene and, where he takes his glasses off when he gets spit on. He's like, I don't fucking give a he, shit. He just keeps talking. He just, he's just like, okay, well, you know what? Fuck you. How about that? Um, that? That actually transitions into one of my favorite scenes is when um he starts the exorcist and he puts the, uh, like the, the cloth from his neck around her and it looks like she's like a short-circuited machine where she just starts she spinning out onto pea it. Soup. like she's yeah. not intending to it's just falling out of her I'm like that's fucking an amazing shot it's an amazing shot and then like he just like calmly like collects it up and hands it to yeah. Father Karras and Karras goes washes it off and he puts it back on and I'm like kisses fucking it too. absolute absolute madman yeah absolute madman I would not have touched that thing unless it was at least soaked in Purell for at least a night that's disgusting, but whatever. You know, he had a job to do. But it, it's kind of funny because it's like we follow Karis for a lot of this movie. We learn a lot about him. We, we're with him during his trials and tribulations with his mother and his issues with faith, which is a big, a big part of his character. And you expect him to be like, as soon as he notices that it is an, it is a real situation where they need to do an exorcism, you think that his faith would be completely re- reignited. He's just dumbstruck. 
it's not and the entire time he's he is so just absolutely stunned when the exorcism starts that he's forgetting to, to, to do his part which you mean like i've never done an exorcism i don't know if this is if this is correct but like maybe that's why it didn't work the first time why i had to come back for it so like the, the best thing about the ending is because Pazuzu goes into him, he jumps oh, out the window. Yeah, I, I specifically very much want to talk about that scene. Yeah, let's talk about that. That, it. that is that is my fa- one of my favorite scenes in the horror movies. Yeah. Because it, it's not just that part of the scene. It's the, before it's the part too. immediately before when I say, like, I think Jason Miller's performance in this movie, especially considering, as far as I understand, he was not really an actor before this movie. Mm-hmm. He is absolutely fantastic in this. And when he sits down, he's defeated. Like he's just like, I don't know if we can do this. Like he, he got kicked out of the exorcism. Got kicked by, out of home room. He got kicked, <laughs> kicked out of home room by uh, by Mr. Mara. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he uh, he gets kicked out because he you know he's he's fallen for Bazuzu's tricks and he's not in the right headspace to to be a part of the exorcism. And Father Marin asks him kindly to go. And he goes out, goes downstairs defeated. He's like, "Well, can Marin do this without me?" Essentially, like he's sitting there, like all defeated, because he's like, "Well, I, I, I can't help if, if I'm gonna fall for these tricks." And you know, the mother walks out and says, "Is she gonna die?" And he just looks at her and he says, "No." And then he, when he stands up, he wait, he pauses, and you know that he has regained his faith, and he he's gonna go in there, and he's gonna save her. So, come hell or high water, he's going in there to save her, whether it takes his life or not. This is my biggest question. Because you said he pauses, he regained his faith, and he goes in there. The best thing about the ending is that he doesn't finish the exorcism. He doesn't no. do that. He takes Pazuzu into him and he jumps. Yeah. Does he really? Does he actually have his faith back? I think he does. But that's the, that's that's why I, the scene I, works. You think he for does? me for me that plays to me like the reason why he was able to go back up those stairs is because of his faith. But you could also read it by saying. It doesn't have to do with his faith, just the fact that he wants to make sure this this little girl's okay. He wants Maybe. to do the right thing. He wants Maybe. to save her. But I also think that if you're going to believe in someone like Pazuzu, you have to believe in someone on the other side of the equation. I would agree, too. If I you saw know, if you're, my if you're bed shaking and... in front of me and a demon yeah. and a little girl, I'd say, Oh, that's I've got some fucking conviction in my words right now. That's I my thing. Like... I wouldn't falter, but it's a lot tougher for him. Yeah, that's my thing, though. It's like the whole... I mean, obviously, they make a very, very clear point earlier in the film to state that he is... He feels that he might have lost his faith. Yes. And, you know, seeing all this happen... Again, like, it... They people always say it, you know. If you if you believe in one side of the equation, you believe in you have to believe in the other. And if not you're gonna true. look, I, it, it, it is or it isn't. That's so it not matter. true. I that statement is so like marginalizing to like a, a monotheistic religion, though. Like that yeah. isn't fucking true. To believe in one, you have to believe in the other. Yeah, I mean, I I would have to say I would have to say that just distilling that down to its to its more basic terms if you believe in bad you have to believe in good good yeah, has I mean, to exist if there is bad afterlife though no he's saying that, that yeah. they're saying that if there's a if there's a bad side of the equation there's the devil pazuzu they're not saying pazuzu yeah. is the devil but if 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 there's one side of the equation that is the devil then there has to there's be some sort probably of someone higher, on the other yeah, side yeah i understand what you're saying so i'm just saying you know, that statement in whether, general is yeah, like whether whether you agree with it or not, I mean that's that's a basic principle, I guess, uh, of that kind of a of a lifestyle. But to me, when he's going up there, he like, he believes he, it's kind of hard not to believe <laughs> believe that um yeah that this that this thing is that this this thing is a demon, and you can take it into your body. I feel like at that point, you you have regained your faith your faith because you're believing in this evil thing, and I I feel like especially because he is a priest, I I feel like that perspective is pretty i think the read I, I think the scene reads more as not regaining his faith though but regaining his conviction in general at the end of yeah, the I mean, day i don't think it's that father cares is like you know what jesus was fucking mega real <laughs> god is fucking hype yeah i think at the end of the day he's just saying like i am not going to be responsible for the death of this little girl i'm gonna yeah. fix this i'm gonna make sure that she's okay I'm not saying he doesn't regain his faith. I'm not saying that's not what yeah, happens. No, I, I understand. I just think the scene works better because he doesn't complete the exorcism. He does yeah. have to suck him into him and he, I'm, I'm he commits suicide. Yeah, yeah and, and to me it's like, again, like this feels like it's, it's a, it's a um, completion of an arc. Because I mean, that, that, that's that's one of the things, the earliest things before they even talk, I think before they even talk about his dead mother or his dying mother, 
uh, they talk about how he's losing his faith. So yep. to me, when you start to sow the seeds like that, I'm just like, well, this is probably what's, what's going to be happening. But also at the same time, instead of just, because they already say like, he's not experienced enough to finish the exorcism. If you finish the exorcism himself, he wouldn't be able to because because Father Marin's dead. So the only uh, he knows that I, I think I think he makes a choice because he thinks the only other option at this point because Marin is dead and it's a two man job at least is if he takes this demon into him somehow and frees himself away from the girl that this this demon will be banished and he makes a split second decision a very selfless decision and it's it's fucking awesome. I I love Jason Miller in this. He is so fucking good and whenever when i was sitting there i got chills when when he asks her when she asks him is is my daughter gonna die and he says no and he just goes back up those fucking stairs scene, and i'm like I that's mean, a badass motherfucker right there i wouldn't say best scene but my favorite scene in the movie I, I would say it's my favorite yeah i wouldn't say it's the best For i think sure. other scenes are probably on paper better scenes, um, the, but... the actual exorcism is incredible yeah not just you know obviously the performances from both of them are fucking awesome and and um I Linda think Blair but gives the, the best performance. performance in the film she's awesome I, I just think like what's required of this woman in this film for this type of story she doesn't just give a good performance I think it's hands down one of the best performances you could see from a mother character in any type of film yeah you that's really well written. believe that is her daughter that is being taken advantage of being destroyed from the inside and out yeah what oh ellen bernstein amazing performance ellen bernstein that's her name i mean all of the acting in this is fucking perfect i wouldn't change performance i even like the detective yeah he he's he's not he, he's not in it too too much for some reason i remembered uh the scene where he asks her for her autograph for her autograph being way earlier in the movie i love that scene i think it's really funny yeah, I, I, I love, actually love that. Um, me, I love that. Yeah. I saw your movie six times. Wow, really? Angel. Yes. But the thing about the team, like, bring just bringing it back to Bernstein's performances. You have that scene where he, she's talking, you know, doing the thing that famous people do when they're talking to fans, like they're really nice about it, and you know, signing an autograph, and you know, being like, "Oh wow, you watched that movie seven times? Wow, that's crazy. Wow, here's your autograph." And as soon as she shuts the door, she fucking breaks down. Yeah, because he knows that her daughter's responsible for killing that the person that she yeah. was seeing. Yeah. Fantastic. It, it's fucking just she's so good, man. You, you I mean, like, I, it's it's hard to recommend watching it, but you need to see Wrecking for a Dream because she is she might be the best yeah, part of Wrecking for I'm a Dream. Not do that anytime soon. Yeah, it's a tough movie. It's a very tough movie to watch. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. That's that's a, but it's a very very tough movie to watch. But she, her, everybody in the movie has has a drug addiction. Hers is diet pills. Oh, yeah, it's I mean, I her, her, per- <laughs> her her performance alone is the reason to watch the movie. She's she is the best part of the the movie. I think she got Academy Award nominated for it too, and she deserved it. Probably she deserved she probably deserved to win. I don't, I don't know. Ninety nine was the year that came out. Yeah, so it been the 2000 Oscars. I don't remember what, what came out in 99 that it would have been up against. She probably would have been the Best out. Supporting Actress, Matrix. <clears throat> Matrix would have been out. I don't know if, it, if that got attention or not. doesn't matter. Point is, Ellen Burstyn's a fucking awesome actress. And, you know, I've only ever seen her in two things, but, you know, she's incredible. I think I've... her performance in this film is the best. I, I think everybody's a fantastic performer. I love every everything that's been given out i just think the job she was given she ran it to the moon I, i'm just so amazed yeah. by her performance yeah she's wonderful i would say like it's her or linda blair for me because she's su- she's such i mean she's not that young she's like 13 14 the actual actress not the character's 12 yeah but um you know she she's still a younger actress and what she's asked to do in this beyond just i mean obviously they they probably dub over, they dubbed over her with the voice yeah but she still as a presence a, yeah a physical presence on screen incredible she is there's a reason why she's iconic she literally she, for an entire generation of people she was the bane of our existence because she was at the end of all those fucking screamer things where they play like a little clip and all of a sudden slam you with a picture of uh mm-hmm. Reagan at the end of it yeah, with a big scream going up like the mountain or whatever yeah so it's, it's like she, yeah. there's a reason why actually I've seen some with like different endings to it than that but yeah yeah but they did a bunch of those 
it would be on like funny junk and shit like that but uh that shit's gone yeah i mean it's it's cringe so yeah like she she was a bane of our entire generation because that shit she was screamers were one of the fucking worst things on the internet for the longest time but also like just like watching her i had nightmares of reagan as a kid from the screamers the more so i didn't see the movie until i was i was a bit older but you know like i i had vivid nightmares of her like waiting at the end of my bed like she's horrifying asking for high fives no definitely not asking for a high five hey down low buddy <laughs> no no that's under the bed ah <laughs> yeah just an arm rolls out yeah no i'm yeah that's that's she's horrifying and it's not even just like what she's obviously when she's pazuzu she's incredible but she's she's really good before that oh she's a, she's, she's a, a great genuine daughter. yeah so she's a genuine kid she's having a good time she's happy with her mom even though you know she's got some rough stuff going on with her dad being a piece of shit you know she's just a genuine kid you know i, I remember like the, the scene where she's talking to her mother about getting a horse yeah and just laughing at that because it's pretty funny she's just talking like, to her mom about like her being with the director that's yeah. not what i heard <laughs> but it's like i also like i remember those kinds of conversation having those kinds of conversations with my dad yeah. Where, like, I would horse? say, not about a horse. <laughs> um, but, like, I, you know, I'd see something at the store, or my, my friend would have hey, Dad, some. Can I buy a pack of gum? Wear. No, Michael. Yeah. We have gum yeah. at home. It's just, like, a no. bottle of water. No, the, the best the best thing was, like, we, we would be talking about, I don't know, it was, like, a, a video game or something. I'd be like, you know, Dad, you know, I'm playing this game at my friend's house, and it was like, this is, you could do this, 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 and this, and then it's like, oh, it's really fun, Dad. Can I have it? No. no. You want to hear no. one of my stories about like? It's, it's a lo- it's a lot less cute than it is in this movie. The, the most like no. fucking depressing moment of my childhood at going to like Toys R Us with my grandfather is I wanted to get like a fucking video game for like GameCube or whatever. It's probably yeah. like I think it was like Naruto or something, one of the Clash of Ninja games. Here's your first mistake. All right, fuck off, dumbass. <laughs> those are, those are actually pretty fun. Um, fighting Naruto. Games. Okay, buddy. Showing your I've I, I watched like three episodes of Naruto. I have nothing to, to really say about it. Us. But, yeah, <laughs> it, it, those are fun games. Connor had the first one. I was like, oh, it's the second one. I'm like, hey, man, what if I got that game? He goes, what if you didn't? <laughs> You're not getting it. I was so fucking pissed. I was like, I really want that fucking game. I felt oh, you son of a bitch. You fucking done me wrong this time. I will forget this. And, like, I, I remember sitting in, like, my in the car fucking angry as shit, like, I get, I'm not, I got nothing to play when I get home now, asshole. And I'm just sitting there, and the song on the radio goes, You can't always get what you want. Oh, that's too perfect. And, and I looked at him, and, I was, and I'm like, fuck you. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was like, I know you didn't turn the song on. Fuck you, and fuck the radio station. Change it. I, I was just so mad. Obviously, I'm like seven, so I'm not saying that, but I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking terrible, like, terrible day. That's funny. Hilarious in hindsight. Very. It's funny. really funny. <laughs> in the moment, heartbreak. Not not so much Shattered. Funny. Life is yeah. meaningless. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember being a kid and fucking getting mad about not getting certain things. My my mom left me in the middle of a blockbuster because I was like, I want to rent this game or something, and she's like, Nope. And I was mad about it. She just left me there. No, I don't think it was for like for like she she walked outside and waited for like five minutes and then came back. I and I still got to go home and watch Flubber. Because we had like two blockbusters. In our I hometown. I went to. The, I, I went to the one the town over. Oh, really? Which one? <laughs> Can't really describe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The town starts with a B. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, True. so, I mean, there was two in our local area. I had not gone to the... In our town, there were there? In our town? There was two. I, I can't remember. I used to go I, to Age of Video. I, that's the thing. I didn't go to them. I used to. I would go to Age of Video more than anything. Because there was yeah, one it's close. in the town and then one in the town over. Yeah. And I went to the one the town over a lot. So I never went to Blockbuster more than probably like 20, 30 times. Sounds like a lot, but like Age of Video was like way more Yeah, than but that. when you cons- when you consider how often I mean when you consider how how long Blockbuster was around when we were a lot when we were when we were around, that yeah. 30's not a lot. No, it's not. I just remember whenever it was my mom's weekend, I would go over to her house and we would go to Blockbuster and we would rent a movie and, and maybe a game, depending upon how good I was. Dude. And you know, we used to rent I rented I remember I remember like that time when she left me there, I still I was like I, I got to leave 
yeah, I was I was upset. I couldn't get the thing I wanted, but I still man, she still rented Flubber for me. <laughs> I don't know what why I wanted to watch Flubber that bad. Probably because Robin Williams and I like this is now fire. Well, if you get left there, I mean, you kind of feel obligated to get something at that point. Yeah, I mean, she stepped outside for five minutes, but <laughs> yeah, too long. That's how you terrify a seven year old is just leave the leave the house, leave, leave the, the 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 building. I remember one time uh, I pissed my grandfather off. I was messing with him. I was like, I'll beat you up, old man. And I'm like fucking 10. I was like, dude, I'll kick your ass. I, I could do it, man. I run really fast. And I kept messing with him. And he pushed me off of his foot. But he pushed me so hard, he knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> oh, I remember And he that. goes, oh, man, I'm that. so sorry. Do you want to go to Toys R Us? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, was, I was like, I should get my ass kicked more often. <laughs> Small price to pay. You just gotta stop pi- breathing for a few minutes. I can picture your grandpa saying, uh, You wanna go to Toys R Us? Yeah, sick. Uh, yeah, I God, mean, it, it's God damn it, like, Scott. Blockbusters and stuff. Like, it's funny because, like, it, it's not necessarily like on purpose but we've subtly had to like make replacements for those times like when blockbuster was gone we'll go to fye we'll just go there for a bit we'll spend our time there browsing for movies we just won't buy them because we're fucking poor and then we're just checking out oh yeah oh they brought that in cool it's too expensive fuck you fye nice and then fye is gone because they suck and everything's way too expensive then we got like, moved to another town. Oh, cool. We'll have to go to, like, Best Buy. And now Best Buy fucking sucks. Yeah, now Best Buy is absolute trash. And now it's almost I'm so like angry. we've been stuck with having to use services, like streaming services. And Amazon to buy every And we've movie. been so adamant, like, fuck this stuff. We want physical media. But it's almost like the world's telling you, grow the fuck up. And it's just like, no, you grow the fuck up. This is better. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. I mean, like, I can't I was imagine talking, I was, going to a video store and renting The Exorcist being like, this shit. I, I was saying it earlier, too. Like, I'm glad I watched this on my Blu-ray because the picture quality is fucking incredible. I'm sure. For a Blu-ray, I was stunned. I, like, I was really stunned. I, and the only reason I even have the Blu-ray is because it was on sale at Best Buy for, like, six bucks around yeah. Halloween. I had this. I got the Steelbook. With, a, with the holographic cover. Yeah, I got the, the Steelbook one. It's pretty neat. I'm jealous. That'd probably be probably a really pretty well, still. You but... got the uncut though. Why is the article? Yeah, I also I don't like the like they gave me a they gave me a slip cover, but the the cover is just like uh, Reagan green and looking up. That's that shot of her just looking up. Yeah. Uh, Side eyed. I and I'm like this is this is not really good looking. And then I pull out it's the slip the actual like interior artwork is just the like the iconic poster image. I'm like I wish this was the slip. Well, yeah, like, we it should broke, just fix never it. Like, change the artwork of what was originally supposed to come out. Like, I, I was talking about the Goosebumps books. You can't get any of the books with the original artwork anymore. They've I have Goosebumps number one original. Very nice. It's the only Goosebumps I have. <laughs> but you cannot get any of them with the original art- artwork. They're, it's yeah, all, all, re- all the, redone artwork. Yeah, all the packs it's you worse. get are, are, are new. The, art, the artwork is worse, the art. but regardless, even if the artwork was better, you should not change the original art for something that is so, not even just iconic, but like, it's a staple. We should not be changing the art. If I yeah. get a new cover for The Burning, I don't want to have a different cover than the original poster. Like, you should yeah. have the fucking posters that were originally coming out with these films. I hate that shit that it's not like that. The slip and the ori- the, the, the interior art when you unwrap it should be the original poster yeah if you want to extra it or whatever, extra yeah. slip should be like the, the reverse should be the yeah the, old, the new art if, if they want to give that to you yeah i think it's fine to have a choice but it's sometimes you don't get a choice which is the worst part it's like hey dude this was the poster when it came out this yeah. is what i want like yeah and like, and like <clears throat> for, for something like the exorcist like the image of Father Marin in the fog with that beam of light coming down on him. Again, great imagery. Yeah. For like, it, It's kind of hard to say, like, oh, just very unsubtly. He's showing up. He's like a ray, of, a ray from God. It's so like, yeah, that's the fucking point. It's an exorcist. Like, it, it is supposed to be unsubtle. Like, it's yeah. not It's not that fucking... It, it, it is an exorcist. That's literally what he is. Yeah, well, how are you going to make uh, it subtle being like, hey, just exercising with the homies? Yeah. <laughs> But like that 
should always be the cover. I mean, like, yeah, it should be. It, it's cool to have like alternate like steel books with different art or you know alternate covers if you like for alternate releases and stuff. Like, I get that, and I'm I'm appreciative that the inner art isn't that ugly ass green shot of Reagan and it's mm-hmm. the classic art. But it is it is kind of annoying. It's like you. <laughs> I get it because it's part of a promotion. That's why they're like that. Because I got te- Texas Chainsaw Massacre one to the remake, and it, it's a similar cover. But actually, kind of funny. The slip cover is the the classic art that most people think of when they think of that remake. And the interior artwork is like a, a weird redone home release version. Weird. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. It's weird. Anyways, doesn't matter. Not part of the movie, but my little rant about physical media for today. Hey, dude. It's all part of the hustle. <laughs> Whatever. You yeah, know, this we're, movie... We've pretty much talked in length about what we had to say. I mean, the yeah. only thing we should really discuss shortly, because, you know, it's getting a bit long already, but just why this is so impactful for the 70s. I mean, like, if you really look at, like, movies... This this arrived pretty early in the 70s. I think, like, 72 or 73. No, it didn't. Really? I'm kidding. I think I'm pretty sure it was, like, 73. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I'm fairly certain it's early 70s. And for a time like that, like, this is... There's nothing like this that's in public consciousness, not counting like grindhouse movies that do fucked up shit. But like this was vi- this was a an eye opening movie for a lot of people. Seventy three. Yep. Yeah, this movie it delivered imagery and situations that no one was used to seeing. I can't think of off the top of my head very many movies that dealt with the concept of exorcism before this. That doesn't mean they don't exist. I just may not know of them. But this brought it to the forefront of public consciousness, which it and... stayed to this day. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, so many mo- so many movies today are still chasing this movie. Yeah, you, you have you have a lot of like, just different different types of movies that that go after exorcism. You know, you they usually like the are last... fucking terrible too. Yeah, I mean, there's out, out of like recent crops of them, I can only think of a couple that I really like, and that's like the last exorcism. Uh, also, coincidentally, a found footage movie that I enjoy. I don't like found footage movies, as I've said before, but that's a good one. I saw that in theaters when it came out. It's really scary, but. Um, you know, that one, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which kind of like this one, kind of sidesteps what you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's mostly a courtroom drama that uses the exorcism as, like, evidence that they're bringing out. It's actually really good. It's a really good movie. One of Scott Derrickson's better films. Uh, but, like, you have movies like that, and I think, I think, is it Conjuring 1 that has the exorcism in it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think because, I don't, um... Actually, both, don't both they? Don't both of them do? Conjuring 1 and 2? I can't remember. I haven't watched Psycho in theaters. I, I, I'd have to think yeah. about it. But I know Conjuring 1 The Conjuring 1 films has... are very different, though, because they're not structured no. around being exorcist films. Really. Yeah, it, they're mostly haunted house movies till the very end. Yeah. And they do an exorcism there, which is good, but, you know, you, you, get, you, you still get movies that are like, I want this to be like The Exorcist. Yeah. And I, to, to my knowledge, none of them have come close. I, I think... When this film came out in 73, it really changed the atmosphere of what you're looking at in horror. Uh, by the 70s, we're getting to a period where Chainsaw comes out in 74, Black yeah, it's Christmas wild. comes out in 75, Halloween comes out in 78. Everything after The Exorcist starts developing the slasher genre, and then the slasher genre takes off and just fucking kills through the 80s. But yeah. when The Exorcist came out, this just fucking dropped audiences like never before. It's like this is nothing like we've ever seen before. Yeah. And in the, in that period until about 74, 75, yeah, it's only a year, but for that year, everyone's like, I, I'm fucking terrified of the unknown again. And yeah. it's so, that's what made slashers really pick up if you ask me though. To have people say, I'm terrified of the unknown. Like, what is above or below can haunt me. That's when Hooper, Hooper comes in and he goes, all right, you're scared? Be scared of your neighbor. And then Chainsaw just fucking terrorizes you in general. You're like, yeah. oh my god. I'm worried about, you know, the afterlife. I have to worry about fucking Tony down the street. <laughs> you see, this is kind of why, like, we talked about, like, our favorite decades for horror. This is kind of why 70s is my favorite decade. Yeah. There, it, there's it, so it, many boundary-pushing movies in this decade. You know, mm-hmm. just, like, you know, we, we start out the decade with boundary pushing movies like this and immediately the next year texas chainsaw comes out and then, and then that, with black it christmas. around around that black christmas comes out and yeah, then you have movies halloween's at the end of the at the end you have alien the, Amity, the amityville horror 79 you have 
Yeah. Fucking uh, uh, the Omen is towards the end of the seventies too. Like, uh, Don't Look Now, which is one I, I haven't seen Don't Look Now yet, but that's one that a lot of people point to as being. I believe that's also a um, possession movie, but I'm not positive. But uh, you know that was one that's very you know boundary pushing as well. The seventies were a wild time. Everything for just picks up and then just evolves. The entire genre went oh, through a deep huge red. influx of change. Deep Red came out in in the seventies. So did Suspiria. That's um, seventies, isn't it? Suspiria. Yeah. David Cronenberg Shivers, which was really uh, it was actually a first time watch. I think this year very very kind of insane movie because it's zombies but they're sex crazed zombies and that pushing the the boundaries of like sexuality in movies was pretty crazy at the time yeah i know uh, it's just funny because it's cronenberg yes cronenberg <laughs> but yeah uh now all i picture is fucking the uh, killer from uh, nightbreed yeah. creepy ass fucking psychiatrist over here trying to try to bang yeah like the 70s were a crazy fucking time and it, it's kind of crazy like some transition some of these transgressive movies that really fucked up people like Exorcist and Texas Chainsaw especially because Black Christmas is, is a movie that a lot of people still haven't seen. Yeah. But like that like even Halloween like Halloween reinforced what Chainsaw Texas Project Chainsaw started. Yeah. So it, it continued this this you know we had we actually had like a, a kind of mixture of you have all these like supernatural horror movies like Exorcist like Annieville Horror like the omen and all that stuff and then you'd have all these other kinds of movies especially like the birth of the slasher genre and it's just like putting things on film that previously we wouldn't have <laughs> like i couldn't picture a movie like this i mean i think this movie was written in like 1950 something the book i should say i could not imagine this movie coming out in the 50s i couldn't imagine it coming out in the 60s yeah it the, couldn't happen any other time than the 70s. The film perfectly reflects the decade that it came out in. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect. It's based on a real case from 49, I think. So, yeah, I don't know. Just, it, this movie is a marvel. Final wrap-up? It's a marvel? It's a marvel. It's a marvel movie. It's cinema. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, no. yeah no. It's like Justice uh, League? Just like Justice League, bro. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, I mean, this it, it's horror royalty. Let's be completely frank. Like, yeah. You know, some people might still these days call it overrated. I, I couldn't imagine it. They're Could stupid. not imagine it. You know, just like take, taking out of the equation, like, oh, I think this this movie's not that scary. Whatever. It's an it's incredible... It's not supposed to be scary, though. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. It's, it's the atmosphere. It's disturbing. And if, and if this... I mean, I guess it's kind of tough to, to argue with people about that just because it's like... There's a lot of things that have happened in movies lately that are pretty fucked. You know, yeah. We just we just watched Malignant and that's fucking messed up. Yeah. And you know, they're be like, oh, it's not that disturbing. I think to me, anything like this happening to a child is inherently disturbing, and if it's not disturbing to you, that kind of disturbs people. People just want to be jaded about their films now. I, yeah, I feel like a lot of people just ah, it's overrated. It's you know, everyone talks about it being great, so I'm just gonna be an asshole about it. Like that's pretty much. It's also like about the craft of, of the film. I mean, even disregarding about how scary something is, like just the level of just meticulous setup and shots and how everything has to come together and the way it's perfectly planned out, the score, the sound mixing, everything just flows really fucking well. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even talk about freaking antics on set, but... Yeah, we can't. Yeah. They're bad. He was, bad, he was Director, bad. very forceful, bad man. He, he was bad. He did bad stuff. Not yeah. great. Resulted in a fucking amazing movie. Yeah. This is like Kubrick and. So, my final that, wrap up. Uh, I think the movie is a film that you know it's a good movie, but you really forget just how much it hits home and how much you can get. You can really get drawn into it while you're watching it. Like I said, I wasn't gonna pay attention. I was gonna just do a refresh course. Say, hey, whatever. I've seen it before. Not a big deal. I saw it recently. And then still, I put it on, I watched the whole fucking thing, being like, I'm so glad I watched this again. Fantastic movie, always can draw you in, always can make you pay attention, and always can make you feel just uneasy, uncomfortable, disturbed, unnerved. Everything about it just sets you at an emotional feeling that you're not supposed to be put in. That's why it's a great film. I really can't give it anything less than like a nine and a half. I'd say nine and a half is also... Yeah, I, I could push it to a ten, but I, I'm just not gonna do that right now. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's a nine and a half just because I think there's a few things that hold it back. Not nothing major. It's just 
Maybe more comes down to personal preference, if anything. Yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, like, the, the only thing about the movie that like really bothers me is just like that we missed that time about about Father Karras's mom dying or hints that she's just gonna die. I would have liked to set up a bit more lore with so. Pazuzu, but that's like, like I said, a personal preference thing. Yeah, I kind of wish that the time with Father Marin was also spent, you know, creating a, a stronger character around him than. Yes. Yeah, but same time though, I fucking love. Marin. So. Yeah, every second he's on screen, he's great. Yeah, every second he's on screen, he's just a ray of fucking just Jesus juice. So that covers The Exorcist. That's going to round out the 70s. The 80s, we have a We're placeholder for, but yeah. it's being put at the very, very, very end. We're going to do it on Halloween weekend. So we're skipping a generation. I'm sorry. We're going to go to the 90s. Both me and Mike are going to watch Scream. Luckily, in theaters, because it's being re-released for select screenings. Yeah, so we have to fuck around to get this to work. Yeah, it's... No one's gonna notice because they'll get it on time, but we're gonna have to do a rush job because it comes out very close to when the episode's coming yeah. up to air. I, I can't fucking wait to see that movie in theaters, man. I'm I'm very excited. I'm, I'm out of my mind height. We're not, we're not seeing it together, but I'm definitely... No, but... Still. I'm definitely really excited to be seeing it. So because I've loved that movie for a long time. Yeah, it's one of your favorites by one of your favorite directors. Yep. And you know, I I don't love the movie, but I think the ideas it sets up is very great. I if anything, it's like the Matrix where the movie's great, but the people following the trend start to fucking weigh it down. No, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. The nineties were fucking just shit stained for a bunch of meta bullshit, so So Thanks, Scream. We'll see you guys for that episode hopefully. You know, no commitments, but it'd be kind of nice. Big kisses. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you later. Check in the Scream episode next week. And that's all we got to say. Hope you watch The Exorcist. Hope you feel like shit afterwards. Bye. Don't fall off your fucking stairs.